going to talk about. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, was going to talk about her vision to uh, for the the students in in the elementary school and the wreaths across America, and so I'll uh, I'll introduce Roseanne, who I who may have a better introduction for Anne than I do. <laughs> so I'll turn it over to Roseanne. We'll do our program first. And then after the program, we'll get into our business meeting for those that want to stick around and, and hear, what, hear what we got going on. And we welcome you to stay and, and, and stay for that business meeting. And stay for that meeting. Okay, Roseanne. Okay. Okay. Uh, he can't see me, but I know I'm here. Um, uh, Anne is um, a teacher at Elliott Elementary School. She's actually our teacher extraordinaire. And she took up the gauntlet um, when Esther Morrow retired to bring history to all of our children, which is a really nice, nice thing to have continue. And uh, Jan and I work with her, and she's a wonderful liaison with our society. So we're happy to have her here. And um, as uh, Paul said, she's going to be talking to us about the read. Across America program, and I just wanted to say that um, the May Principals Association just recognized the LA Elementary School for their participation in that program and for the recent event that they hosted here in in LA in December. And uh, Ann will tell us all about that. So I'll leave it to Ann to the program and welcome. Thank you, Roseanne. I first want to say thank you for inviting me tonight. Um, I look forward to sharing what our school has done over the past couple of years leading up to um, Reads Across America that was in Elliott in December. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm, Zoom is not um, what I typically use, so bear with me. <laughs> Tracy was kind enough to um, practice yesterday, but we'll see how this goes. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So let's see. So I first became familiar with Rees Across America back in 2016. We had a snow day at school. And at the time, my daughter was much smaller, and um, we threw on our clothes and headed to the trading post because I heard Reads Across America was going to be there, and I was interested to see what that was all about. I had heard some things about it online and Facebook and those kind of things, the normal social media, and I was kind of happy that we had a snow day so I could go check it out because it, that was the closest it was going to be. Um, and these are some pictures outside on Route 1. That's my, myself and my daughter on the right-hand side. And it was a lovely event, well attended um, by locals. Um, and we went inside for a ceremony that was um, they held after, after the fact. And the convoy went inside. And it was just um, goosebumps. That's all I can remember at the time. It just it made me very proud to be there, um, proud to be part of something. And as a teacher, you're always looking for opportunities to bring things to your kids that are going to leave them with the idea of what it is like to be part of a community and to be an active citizen. And, you know, the kids at our elementary school they someday hopefully will take over and ha share what we try to share with them now to keep things going. So as I learned about Readers Across America, I, I love their, um, their slogan, remember, honor, and teach. And that, that means everything. And everything that they do is um, about remembering the, the veterans, those that have fallen, um, supporting the families, how to honor those that serve. And I, I don't know if any of you know, but my husband is active duty in the Air Guard over at Peace. Um, 
and then teach. That's definitely something that's near and dear to me, as well as Jan and some of my other fellow teacher friends. So as I got to learn about Reads Across America, we had a Veterans Day Assembly in 2019. And I had reached out to Reads Across America just to see, could they come to our school? Could they be part of something that we were doing? Could we be a stop along the way to national, um, Arlington National Cemetery? Um, and at the time they said no, um, but they would keep us in mind, but they were willing to send somebody down and take part in our Veterans Day Assembly. When I, when we talk about Reads Across America or Veterans Day Assembly, one of the big things is in the second grade is we strive really hard to get our kids opportunities to be involved in, in activities and events so they know what it, it means to be an active citizen in a community and be part of the community and to give back to the community. I don't know if any of you have heard of the story, um, America's Little White, oops, sorry, America's um, White Table, but I have a short video to show that to you. Hold on, let's see if I can do this. It was just a little white table. Can you see that? But it brought tears of pride yes. to my Uncle John's yes, eyes. The veterans it's a short day video, for dinner but it's very powerful. It, set for one person, even though nobody would be eating at it. It was just a little white table. But earlier that day, Mama had told Gretchen, Samantha, and me the little table we were setting for Veterans Day was just like the ones that have stood across America in the dining halls of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force since the Vietnam War ended. The tables honor the men and women who serve in America's armed forces, especially those missing in action, our MIAs, and those held prisoners of war, our POWs. It was just a little white table, but it felt as big as America when we helped Mama put each item on it and she told us why it was so important. We used a small table, as she explained first, to show one soldier's lonely battle against many. We covered it with a white cloth to honor the soldier's pure heart when he answered his country's call to duty. We placed a lemon slice and grains of salt on a plate to show a captive soldiers' bitter fate and the tears of families waiting for loved ones to return, she continued. We pushed an empty chair to the table for the missing soldiers who were not here. We lay a black napkin for the sorrow of captivity and turn over a glass for the meal that won't be eaten, she said. We place a white candle for peace and finally a red rose in a vase tied with the red ribbon for the hope that all are missing will return someday. Mama finished speaking just as the sunlight spilled on the table and filled the overturned glass. It was just a little white table, but it suddenly made me want to bust with a feeling I couldn't explain when Mama told us how much our setting the white table would mean to Uncle John that night. Then she told us something we didn't know. Let's see if I can... Our Uncle John who gave us big bear hugs and spun us with airplane chores and called me his Katie girl. Now I lost the... Was a POW in Vietnam before we were born. It was just a little white table, but it gave us the courage to ask Mama what happened to Uncle John in Vietnam. She quietly told us his story. When Uncle John served in Vietnam, he... Let's try to escape from that. Hmm. I think just up in the middle tab there, Anne. Yep. See that? There you are. Right there. Can you see the tab above where it says YouTube? Click on that tab. Just so, where it says Reads Across America. If you click on that. No, up above. In the middle. Oh, I don't see that. Oh, you can't. Um, huh. to, to the left of where it says America's Table, there's three tabs. And um, hmm. on my screen, I can see it. That's interesting. Yeah, there you are. Perfect. Okay. I can't see you guys anymore. So <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. Um, just bear with me. That was interesting. So anyway, um, that particular assembly 
was um, kind of the first time that we involved Reads Across America was able to come down. Um, the story was read, America's Little White Table, and kids from our school actually set the state the table as um, the story was read. And then um, we went into trying to get you guys back because that would be nice to see. There we are. Now I can see you guys again. So when they came, Reza across America, actually, you know what? I'm going to stop for a second. How many people before I was even here heard of Reza across America and knew that they existed? Maybe just yeah. Just raise your hand. No. So there, I'm going to go to this and then I'll give you more background information. But at the Veterans Day Assembly, they were able to come down and they did a demonstration on the symbolic part of the wreath and what it means to the people that they place the wreaths on for their um, the headstones. So I wanna show you that. And then I'm fumbling all over the place here. Ask yourself, where would I be? What would my life be like? Was it not for our veterans who have stepped up for all of us time and time again over the course of our nation's history? Hello, I'm Miles Worcester. My grandfather is Moral Worcester. He is the founder of Reads Across America, and he says he's just a wreath maker from Maine. He has been asked countless times, what is a veteran's wreath? And why do we place wreaths on veterans' graves? A veteran's wreath is made of 10 bouquets. Each bouquet describes a veteran. The first bouquet stands for a veteran's belief in greater good. The second bouquet stands for their love for one another. The third bouquet stands for a veteran's strength, work ethic, and character. The fourth bouquet stands for a veteran's honesty and integrity. The fifth bouquet stands for a veteran's humility, selflessness, and modesty. The sixth bouquet stands for a veteran's ambitions and aspirations. The seventh bouquet stands for a veteran's optimism for their fellow Americans and for our country. The eighth bouquet stands for the veteran's concern for the future and for future generations. The ninth bouquet stands for a veteran's pride to carry out their duties. The tenth bouquet, the final bouquet, stands for the veteran's hopes and dreams that didn't always come true but left with no regrets. Now this wreath made with 10 bouquets is a symbol of honor, respect, and victory. It is made from evergreens, which symbolizes longevity and endurance. The circular shape symbolizes eternity and has no beginning and no end. Its clean forest scent symbolizes purity and simplicity. Its red bow symbolizes great sacrifice. This year, when you place a wreath on a veteran's grave, you know it's not just a wreath. It's a personal gift to an American hero. And you will swell with pride knowing that you have done something very, very special. God bless our veterans and God bless America. So one of the Worcesters came to our Veterans Day Assembly and actually made a wreath and told the story of it. Um, and had kids come up and help him actually put the wreath together. And it was very moving and it was very touching. And the more I heard, the more I wanted to know. So I wanna share this with you. And this is Mr. Worcester, who is the founder. He and his wife are very active, Karen. They do the whole trip from Columbia Falls, Maine, all the way to Arlington National Cemetery. And along the way, they stop at different places that are going to have um, ceremonies. But I wanna show this clip with you just because it kind of gives you some background about him and the family. And it is very much a family organization. I think every member of their family has a part in this. It's very touching um, and means a lot to them. So let me show you this video. Stop breathing. And the second time when your Can name you is it? spoken for the very last yes. time. When I'm out here, it's peaceful, it's relaxing. And I feel that connection with my son and with God. 
you don't have to go very deep into a person's family to come up with a veteran. The biggest fear gold strap they always have that their child will be forgotten. Visa Across America uh, is an organization that is like no other. It almost touches every person in the United States at some level. Visa Across America at this point has become an incredible opportunity to teach what we are as Americans and what constitutes the goodness in this country. Every veteran should be respected. They work hard for us. You need to never forget freedom wasn't free. Breeze Across America started almost 27 years ago when my husband, who was in the wreath business, had too many wreaths. We had about a truckload left over that year, which is about 5,000. I mean, we was trying to think of what we could do with them that would do a, maybe some good to some people. Thought about Arlington National Cemetery. He's very patriotic. He just wanted to say thank you. Out of respect for what we have in this country. So it became a family tradition. And it just struck a chord, I guess. It went around the world. This year, we'll be placing about 1.6 million wreaths on the graves of the veterans. The Wreaths Across America wreath laying is really, it's a, it's a celebration of life. That one wreath symbolizes one family, one family that was able to smile because of the generous donations. And you look at the iconic picture and grave after grave after grave and the vastness of it with wreaths on every headstone. But then as you just visualize it, you draw closer and closer and closer and you come to one name and every name is as important as the other. Every name had a different story. January 18th, 2005. My older brother, Billy, served for over 20 years before we lost him. He cared enough for his country and for others that he offered his life for them, for their freedom. It's really important that people understand that Reef Day is an event, but Reefs Across America is a year-round mission. We also place reefs at 1,500 other locations. My ultimate goal is to place a reef on every single veteran's grave. The whole remembrance tree started by just friendship with Gold Star families. I thought it'd be nice to make a dog tag up and give them that tag and say, you can put that on any tree you want, and that becomes your family's tree. And every three years, we'll take those branches from those trees and we'll make them into veterans' trees. It just gives us hope that people won't be forgotten. I didn't really get it at first until I stepped back. You hear all the noise in the background, and it's all the dog tags and the wind. I look at his stone and it's like such reality that he's God. When I come here, the tree is living. And I feel like his spirit's alive in it. And it's just, it's comforting. Their character, their sacrifice is not just our past, it's our future. And the foundation of this country was built on the lives of those men and women that we choose to honor. So it's hard to keep a dry eye when you watch these videos. Um, I get, I've listened to them several times and I still get a little, I find myself a little teary. Um, okay, so. So in 2018, I reached out again and said, can we get you at our school? Can we do something to help? And they at Reads Across America, um, said, let us see if we can hook you up with the person that, at, that plans at the Kittery Trading Post. So sure enough, the next day, I got an email from a wonderful person that's in charge of the ceremony at Kittery Trading Post. And she said, how can, what can you do? What, what would you like your kids to do at our ceremony? Um, and we had a couple of things. One, thanks to Mrs. Sarah Boner, Jan, as we also know, she taught all of our second graders how to sign the Pledge of Allegiance. And then our very talented music teacher at the time, um, who unfortunately took a new job last year. So we're missing him this year, but he still lives on in our school because he's written so many wonderful songs. But he wrote a song um, titled Breeze Across America. 
I'm gonna show you his slide that he put together because I think it's important. It, it has him singing and not the kids and you'll get to hear the kids sing later on. But I want you to just see the slideshow that he put together to introduce and help the kids understand the song that he wrote. So I don't know if any of you, do you know the, um, the tall staircase at the front by the cash registers in the old part of the trading post, our kids were lined all the way up from the floor all the way to the top and you can kind of see them. And they filled those in beautifully. And Jan, I, I can't see you right now, but I think Jan would agree with me. They stole the show that day. Um, they were amazing. So I, I, you'll get to see the kids this year sing, but I want you to see his slideshow because it was part of educating our kids about Reads across America. Thousands of wreaths made of balls, each one to remember a veteran whose faith, love, and strength helped them all to endure while fighting to keep us all free. One bouquet of balsam for honesty And one for their selfless humility Your love of this country was simple and pure Like the sweet scent of evergreen trees And I believe that like each wreath I has no beginning or end. Love is forever. Ambition and hope for our nation are passed on to each generation. The dreams that we have now are all thanks to you. For serving the red, white, and blue. And I believe that like each wreath I see has no beginning or end. Love is forever. Ambition and hope for Passed on to each generation. The dreams that we have now are all thanks to you for serving the red, white, and blue. He's a very talented person in so many ways. So anyway, our kids were there. They signed the pledge with Jan. They sang the song. Reese Across America presented them with this um, honor um, wreath. This little girl's face, my gosh, it's the sweetest thing. Um, we talked to her a couple of months ago because we wanted to use this picture to help advertise for the event in Elliott. And when we reached out to her family, her mom said, every time we go to the trading post, we have to go to the stairs to see where she had this photo taken and she retells the whole events of the day. So to me, that's what it's all about is making kids feel special um, and working to help in a community to preserve things that are near and dear and important to all of us that make us a stronger community. So from that day, um, then the next school year, COVID hit and the school year ended, um, pretty abruptly because of COVID. And then the following year, I was a remote teacher and I was in a classroom with another teacher that was doing remote. She was first grade and I was second grade. And in April, I got this email from Reese Across America and I said, Diane, I said, you're not going to believe this. And she's like, what? She's sitting across the room. She can't see me because we had a bookcase between us. I said, Reese Across America wants us to host an event next year. 
And I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. So that it started, I reached out to the fire department. The Well, I started out with the police department to first to see if that was something that they would want um, to work with us on. And they said, sure, why wouldn't we want to? Um, and then that led to serious conversations. I was very concerned about COVID and knowing that the restrictions in the building, we might not be able to have people attend. Um, and we wanted to share it with the community. So I felt the safest was to find someplace nearby that we could host it, um, but so our kids close enough so we could. So I reached out to Jay Mazzarell and I'm like, Jay, I said, you're not gonna believe this. You don't have to answer me today. Um, and I don't think at the time when I reached out to him, he really fully understood what he was taking on, but that led to many meetings, um, virtual meetings, and it just all came together. And we planned from last April through December. It was a huge effort by our school, the Elliott Police Department, the fire department, um, the people from Music Across America are very supportive. Um, they said, this is your event. You do what you want to. We're here to support you. Um, the lady that's in charge of the convoy is a retired police chief out of Westbrook. And a couple of weeks before the event, she actually came to Elliott with another person. They were doing a whole trip to Arlington and they were making a stop at every place. They actually measured out Dixon Road to see if it would hold the vehicles that they wanted, um, kind of did a dry run. It was, it was very impressive. Um, they were very well organized and very helpful. Um, they just wanted people to, these Gold Star families to be recognized and for the community to support them and remember them. It was very, it was powerful. Um, we had a lot of support. Let me see. Oops, I skipped a slide. Yeah, we had a lot of support. Um, one of the teachers at our school, her husband works for Sundance Screen Printing in Dover, and he made this huge street sign, which from the day it went up to the day it came down, the wind beat that poor banner. Silly. Um, they had to take it down and we attached it to the ball field. Um, our kids made um, decorations like the soldier here. They made poppies to put on all the seats. Um, some grade levels made wreaths. It was a whole school wide effort. And while this was all going on and all, um, all the organization, you can see on the upper right hand side of my slideshow, Jan and Roseanne put together a display case in our school and it honored some former Jan or Roseanne. You'll have to remind me what year it was, but they have pictures of veterans from Elliott um, that was on loan to them. And we invited our kids to bring in pictures of family members that they might have that were in the military. So we kind of gained some momentum with it that way. Congdon's Donuts in Wells, they donated um, hundreds and hundreds of donuts for the cause. Golden Harvest, bananas, apples, Jersey Mike's the date a week before the event, our superintendent had one of the one of the things we had to do was we had to provide lunches for the volunteers. 175 people in the caravan needed lunches. And our superintendent said, I will absolutely do that. So he was going to find a way to cover that. And a week before we were ready. Jersey Mike's called from Sockdow and this woman father was a former military person who's deceased now and she felt like she wanted to give back give back to the community and our event happened to be the closest so she sent down almost 200 sandwiches that went with the box lunches that we had already started to put together so it, it really was a huge undertaking with a lot of people um we also had a lot of help from the local VFW, Mel Bates. I'm sure some of you know, he helped with the organization of the schedule for the, the actual event that took place in the fire department, um, the color guards, the um, 
any of any of the ceremonial type stuff he did. And it, it just really all came together quite beautifully. Um, these are some of my favorite pictures from the day. I love this little picture of the little boy with the pom-pom holding the flag, greeting the caravan. Uh, were any of you at the actual event? Some of you are. Um, my husband's right here in this picture. He came with some people from the air guard. Uh, you can see the poppies that the kids made to put on the chairs. Um, Michelle Myers came. Renee Worcester um, is the person with the flag out the Reeds Across America um, banner. She's the granddaughter of Worcester Morrill. And sadly, he and his wife were not at our event because the day before he had suffered a stroke. He's doing fine. Um, but she, she came and spoke on his behalf and she was very teary and wished that he could be with us, but assured us that he was doing well. Here's my sidekick, and me, Miss Sarah Bona. I love the picture of the, um, in front of Orland's barn. It's so beautiful. And the kids lined up outside and then the caravan. I have a couple of quick videos to share with you here. Oh, let me see. I think this is the one to show what the kids did that day. This was in the Fosters. Skip the ad if it'll let me. safe and strong with three rows of seating for up to seven I'm passengers. sorry it won't let me Over skip 110 <laughs> available safety features and the best in class maximum towing capacity it's no wonder okay, there we go There's about 75 kids in our second grade that perform the song. So I think they did a wonderful job. They made a lot of people happy that day. Um, I just want to say, I, I have a couple of short little videos for those of you that might not have been at the at the event, um, just to give you an idea what it was like. But I have to say a huge thank you to the police department and the fire department. The fire department um, went out of their way to make this happen. The day of the event, 
all the fire trucks left the fire department, went across the street into Orland McPherson's driveway. Um, Jay arranged for another town to be on call for us so they could devote their time. They did everything. They set up, they, they, they were amazing. Um, I can't say enough in the police department. Again, amazing. I don't think they quite knew what was coming. I think we all were shocked to see. We were told that there were going to be 18 to 20 tractor trailer trucks coming, but until you actually were there and saw it, did it become real and feel, um, it was just amazing. So many people, in fact, Orland, I saw Orland a couple of weeks ago and he, you guys must know Orland, but he says to me, he goes, I think that might be the biggest thing that's ever landed in Elliot. <laughs> and I think he might be right. So one of these videos is one that Roseanne actually shared with me that I think Eric took, but I just wanted to give people a perspective of the types of vehicles that came. And then the second one I'll show just a little bit, because if you weren't down by the fire department, you might not have seen what it actually looked like. I haven't got my hands on it, but there was supposedly a drone there um, from Reads Across America. And I would love to see what it looked like from above because it was impressive from down below. So let's see if this will work. Oops, wrong one. Let's see. So this was that one that Eric showed. I should mention that they changed the route of the caravan so it would go down 236 and the middle school kids could go out and race, wave flags to greet them as well. So this whole caravan was starting in Columbia Falls, Maine, which is five, five hours north and going all the way to Arlington. And the reeds are inside the tractor trailer trucks. And the wrapped vehicles that you'll see coming soon have the um, had the gold star families inside. So I'm going to stop that one and I'll try to show the other one because it kind of picks up where that left off. Let me see. This one, I think it is. Nope, here it is. <coughs> So our second graders are on the sidewalk because they're going across to perform, but the other almost 300 kids are in the ball field with flags waving.
It's really amazing to think that all of those vehicles were in the center of Elliot downtown. That was the kid's favorite vehicle <laughs> in the caravan. And you can see the line just goes and goes and goes. So anyway, we had, um, after everybody arrived, we went inside and just had a really nice ceremony and there were a lot of tears, happy tears. And a lot of the Gold Star families went up to the kids afterwards and thanked them for participating. It was very touching. Um, I think our kids will remember it. I know I will. Um, we all have our fingers crossed that we get asked to do this again next year because it was such a wonderful community event to um, bring the fire department, the police department, the community, the school together, and that we were ab actually able to pull it off with COVID. So if you hadn't heard of Reese Across America, I hope I was able to share a little bit about them to maybe get you to consider doing some of your own research to learn more. I know one, one year I would love to make it the trip to Arlington and be part of the, the wreath laying ceremony. I did want to mention one last thing, and then I'm, I'll try to answer questions. The day, about a, let's see, they were with us on Monday and on Saturday is the 17th, I think it was, was the day that all the wreaths were to be laid in Arlington. And that's where local communities also have a similar type ceremony. The day before, so Friday, Mel Bates, who is in charge of the VFW and helped with the ceremony, he got a phone call and said, we need help. And he's like, of course, what can we do? One of the communities, and I, I'm not sure which it was, so I don't want to misspeak, was not able to have their wreath ceremony as they wanted to. So they had wreaths that they donated. He got, and they said, if we donate the the wreaths, can you make sure that they make it on veteran, um, veterans headstones in Elliott? And the fire department stored them at the fire station. Mel didn't hesitate. He's like, yes, we'll figure it out. The fire department stored the wreaths at the fire department overnight. They put out face on their Facebook page, as did other people, and said, we need help. And you can see the crowd of people that showed up with less than 24 hours notice. Um, to help lay wreaths. And I, one of our retired secretaries at our school um, actually got to put a wreath on her grandfather's cemetery lot. Um, so there were just some really nice connections that were made. And I'm sure there are some that I don't even know about, but those are the few that I know. Um, so anyway, that's my presentation. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the things that we do at school. And I hope that our kids grow up and want to take part in similar things. So this can be passed down and the morals are amazing. Uh, the Worcesters, I'm sorry, are amazing people that um, they just have a huge heart. And this, this year, um, next year, will mark the 30th year. And to think if you went back 30 years that this was all happened because he had wreaths left over and he wanted to do something to help and look what happened because of that 30 years ago. So my other plan, if I also, I need to get up to Columbia Falls because I would really love to hear the dog tags in the wind. I've heard amazing stories about that and I, I hope to make it up there someday. Jan, did I forget anything? My helper? My sidekick. You did an absolutely beautiful job. Can't be more proud of what you've accomplished. Mm -hmm.
Well, I didn't do it alone. I had a lot of help from you and a lot of other people. There always has, always has to be that person who gets it started. And you have done a lot to make that happen in this community. Well, thank you. But you do a lot to support too. Yeah. It takes a and lot of ideas and a lot of people to work together. And I think our community does that well. I would like to add that one thing that was nice for me as a result of this is after I went to my son's graduation, my grandson's graduation in Washington, DC, and arrived in DC when the uh, caravan that was at Elliott revived in DC. So I couldn't actually get there, which I had hoped to do, but I actually saw it on TV and saw some of the people that we were there down. So it was just a real special end to that beautiful week. I think our kids are very lucky to, oh, you see my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rawlings. Um, I think our kids are very fortunate to grow up in this community. And I hope that someday some of them are still around to help pass on some of these traditions. Yeah, and I'd just like to say, you know, thanks for, for making this happen. I mean, that, you know, when I went out there to film it, I, you know, I didn't even know what to expect, but, you know, it, it, it completely, you know, blew me away how, uh, what a, you know, what a large um, thing it was. I've actually passed them um, on, on I-495 in Massachusetts when I was, you know, coming back from work one, one day, and it was like a huge convoy on the, you know, and, and I think that was the first time that I had seen them, and I, you know, I, I saw the signs on the side of the trailer and looked them up. Um, and that's, you know, that's when I first, you know, knew that this existed and it's, it's so cool that it came through our town. So, you know, thank you very thank much. You. you know, it was one of those things too, being the first time we didn't know what to expect. We, we put things out there so the community would know, but we were almost afraid to, cause we didn't know what to expect. Um, and I think even though the police department, the fire department, myself, Mr. Butterfield, who's the custodian at our school, he was a huge help to me. We were sat in on all those meetings and we listened and we did the walkthroughs and everything. And honestly, we knew what was coming, but until you saw it, did you not truly understand what was really happening? So thank you, Eric. Any other questions? I was curious also, um, I saw in in one of the um, um, YouTube videos, it said that they actually um, donate wreaths to uh, American cemeteries overseas. Um, yes. I, I always wondered about that because I, I actually had visited uh, the American cemetery in Luxembourg where uh, General Patton is buried. And oh, wow. And if, you know, if you ever get a chance to see or visit American cemeteries in Europe, you know, it's quite a, it's quite an experience. Because, um, you know, all of, you know, all of those graves in that particular cemetery, um, they all died in the Battle of the Bulge. Um, and it's, it's just, you know, you look out and all you see is acres of, of, of white stones, and white crosses and, and, uh, you know, it really gets to you, you know, yeah. um, and, the, and the fact that, you know, we, you know, we still think about those cemeteries too, because I mean, that, you know, those are Americans, you know, um, you, know you know, laying there um, forever in, on foreign soil. So it's nice, you know, that they're not forgotten either. So. So I have my fingers crossed that we get asked to host again next year. The Trading Post had for quite some time, um, but I think they were pretty happy to be in our little town. Um, can you hear the, the bell yes. in the background? That's my dog. That's what she does when she has to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my husband trained her to do that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the other thing is, 
um, keep your ears open because Jan and I and Roseanne and Mel Bates and a couple other people um, want to look into possibly doing some fundraisers so we can purchase wreaths to, to continue what was started this year. This year, um, it happened because another town wasn't able to follow through for whatever reason. And we were impressed with the people that came out in such short notice. And so many people are touched by it um, that we would really like to see what we can do about that and see if we can start up something to maybe get that going for next year. I was gonna say, um, I actually was one of the people that helped put down the wreaths and it was an amazing, oh an amazing day it was very very touching it was beautiful and every single person there was like I hope we can do this again next year <laughs> um, and I know that um, one of my good friends in Kittery I'm a teacher at Trace Academy and one of my good friends there was um, the person behind the buoy tree I don't know if any of you heard of that in Kittery um, Kittery Point they made a buoy tree um, and they sold all the buoys for $30 and anybody in the community could buy one and they could paint it any way they want. And all the proceeds went to buying wreaths for wreaths across America. So they had a similar um, thing over there. So they had another like ceremony and they laid down a, a whole lot of wreaths and stuff. And it was just super touching. Um, it was because a somewhat recent Kittery graduate had um, committed suicide and he was a former Marine. So it was very near and dear to all the, the hearts of the people in, in Kittery at the time. So it's very special. So thank you for bringing it to Elliot. It was fantastic. <laughs> Maybe you should help us if we're gonna go forward with wreaths. I would love to, I would love to. I actually asked some of the firemen, a couple of my neighbors or the some of the volunteers and I'm like, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna do this so that we can have it come back? <laughs> so. Yeah. I think everybody enjoyed, enjoyed it. Um, one other last thing I forgot to mention, you may have seen all the flags that the kids are, had in their hands during the arrival. They were donated from a pioneer group in Sanford. They purchased 500 flags for our school and 500 flags for um, Marshwood Middle School because the caravan was going by there. So we had a lot of people that supported our efforts and made the event what it was so anyway thank you for having me thanks for coming and, and you're okay. right it certainly was a, a quite a collaboration of not only our town but other towns supporting us yeah. was well thanks again thank you we'll let you take your dog out <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> all right let's see i'm mean, gonna yeah you can stop sharing that was a great presentation yeah really a yeah. lot of work there and thanks it's, for putting that it's together. hard it's actually hard to um to present virtually <laughs> it's yeah. a little different than being in front of a class of kids all day <laughs> Did a great job so i'm going to go ahead now and stop recording and like i said this will be posted up on our website and uh so you can share it with anybody you can share the link um if you have others in the community that you think would like to watch this what a lot of information was shared. So that was great. All right, start recording.